just just before songs come i just want you to let your spirit connect to heaven just do it just do it for one minute i want to see you do it let your spirit connect to heaven let your spirit flow Just let your spirit before songs come, let your spirit flow. Before the songs come, just let your spirits worship him for things I don't know, mighty things he has done for me, battles he won for me. One for my children, because when you thank him for things he has done, you are positioning yourself for something bigger tonight. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Worship him. And the wife asked David, Why are you doing this? David, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And David said, I am dancing to the God who made me who I am. Without him, there is no me.
hold on. I hear in my spirit is saying, You are mighty. I want you to lift him up. You are lifted up. Daddy, can you do it if he's lifted or above everything in your life, right? You are Everybody lift up your hand and say, You are not smiling. This is the house of your father. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. Can you kindly leave your seat? Look for three people. Tell them, welcome to the house of my father. Welcome to the house of God. Hallelujah.
subject to the living for 12 years. She has suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him. Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus said to, saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. At this, they were completely astonished. Father, thank you for the privilege to share your word. As your word comforts today, touch lives, heal someone today, prosper another, open doors that are shut for someone. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God say better, amen. amen. My topic tonight is titled, Arise. Look at your neighbors, Arise. I want to start it this way, by asking a question. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do... You look at some people and you think within you that this person is so generous, so holy, so pious, doesn't deserve what is happening to him or her. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is it that those who you think should succeed don't succeed sometimes? Why is it that those you look beyond and think they are nobody end up becoming somebody in life? Why do people who serve God so much sometimes you wonder why God seems to be watching and something like this happened to him or her? Sometimes you ask yourself a question and say, God, they don't, this person doesn't deserve to suffer this. She's so devoted, she's so committed, but somehow bad things happen to her. So why do bad things happen to good people? Another question some people ask the Lord is this. Oh Lord, where were you when bad things entered my house? Where were you when this evil penetrated my domot? Where were you? Where were you when the enemy plotted this evil and you allowed it? Lord, where were you when they planned this conspiracy and you did nothing about it? Lord, 
Why do you allow this to happen? Have you wondered? I hear many people ask the same question. Why do, do this kind of thing happen to my son? Lord, where is your power? Why all my devotions? Why all my devotions? If you will watch this kind of thing, how not? Beloved, nothing pays like serving God and what you are looking for from God. Every day you come to church and you see someone give testimony of receiving that same testimony. That same thing you are praying for. Someone somewhere comes to the church and says, Praise the Lord. God has done mine. And you are waiting for the same thing for 10 years. You keep hearing the testimony, but it never happened in your life. I went to somewhere in mainland, Agigesai. I was crossing to go and preach at St. Sabina. And I saw where someone dropped a life baby. A baby boy. And the boy was crying. Crying. Hey, 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 hey. And everyone gathered. And one woman came to the same, stood, and started crying. And I was watching. She was crying. Tears. Sister, what is it? She said, I've been devoted. I serve God all my life. He promised me. But look at the prostitute. He gave this to a prostitute who knew no value of a child, who took the child and dumped near the gutter. The same thing I sleep in the church every night for. The same thing I'm waiting for. God, why do you judge things like this? Why do you do things like this? There are many people who come to church. They are wishing that one day God will do this miracle for me. But 10 years after, it has never happened. And someone just came to church two days ago, gave her life to Christ two days ago. And in the next thing we hear is that the miracle has happened to her. And they said I should join hand and clap for her. Are you following me? Are you following me? I, I, I won't share the testimony of a sister who came to conference and Fadozeli was ministering, let go and let God. And this woman was going for prostitution. She was going for prostitution on her way. And on that night, as she was going to prostitution, she stopped wearing her just everywhere showing. And she stopped hearing the word of God. Instead of going for her night walk, when Father said, come and give your life to Jesus, she went and gave her life to Jesus. So as she was marching at the field to Jesus that day, everyone was watching her. People were looking, what, what is she wearing? With tears on her eyes, she was moving before the altar of the Most High. And when she finished, in the midst of counseling, she said, my womb has been removed. I have no womb. The doctor said I can't have any child anymore because I've done abortion four times. But do you know the surprising thing is that this lady gave her life to Jesus, moved away from the hotel, gave her life to Jesus, did life in spirit seminar, started following Jesus. Two years after, a brother said I will marry you. And the sister said, no, you don't know me. I was that prostitute who gave her life, in case if you have forgotten me. And the brother said, I know. But the Lord said, I should still marry you. I will marry you. She said, my womb have ruptured. And they have said, they removed everything. No hope for me to have a child. And the brother said, I've had you. I'm coming. The brother left. Three days after, the brother came back again and said, even if you don't have any child, we will adopt one. But I know miracle can still happen. But do you know the surprise? I'm, I'm leading you somewhere. This same sister that have not stayed more than three years in the Lord. Eight to nine months in the marriage. The womb opened. How 
come nobody can answer the sister said i don't believe this is true i don't believe this is true because the doctor confirmed to me the doctor told me that there is nothing that i cannot have any child anymore the doctor told me she kept saying the doctor told me and the pregnancy was coming out the doctor told me until she gave birth to that child and when she would give birth to the child she gave birth to twins baby boys Hold on, hear me, beloved. Do you know the surprising thing? When she was giving the testimony, all the sisters who were believing God for fruit of the womb stood still. Those who wedded even as a virgin served the Lord all through their life. They stood still. But here was a prostitute. God decided to show mercy. Romans 9 verse 15 and 16 says, The Lord showeth mercy to whoever he wants to show mercy. It doesn't matter whether you serve him or not. It doesn't matter whether your boss said to you well or not. God does not need the permission of your boss to change your life. God does not need the permission of your brother to lift you. Whoever God wants to show mercy, he show mercy. When it comes to rain falling, he falls on the wicked, he falls on the righteous. And you say, God, why not just the righteous alone? Beloved, the question we ask today did not begin from us. The people before us, like in Jeremiah chapter 12, Jeremiah asked the Lord this solemn question, why do the wicked prosper and you watch the righteous suffer? And God said to him, is that your question? He said, yes. And God said, go and get a golden cloth. Dig the ground, put the cloth inside. And after some days, come back. He came back and he said, he has lost the touch of the gold. And God say, that is the way the prosperity of the wicked, it doesn't last. But my point is this. He asked the question, why do the wicked prosper? And the righteous. So the question didn't start from you. The question didn't start from me. The question didn't start from us. No one knows the ways of the spirit. As no one can understand the mystery of our most high God, no one can hold him in the hand. When you think you have known him, he shows you another side of him. God is a mysterious God that only him understands himself. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Listen to me. When God wants to change a man's story, he changes it in such a manner that generation after you we keep talking about you one single open door from God can wipe away 50 years of agony I'm talking to somebody it is only in God that overtaking is allowed am I talking to somebody the Bible says Psalm 30 verse 5 he said tears may endure for a night but joy Joy, oh joy will come when? Joy will come. Now when the joy will come, it will terminate all the pain of several years. This is what I've discovered about God. God knows how to incubate testimony for his children. So that by the time he releases it to the world, they will not stop talking about it in five years. Listen to me. God can allow your friends to go ahead of you by human power and philosophies of life so that when he performs the wonders, he will allow you some time to press all the bells you know and he fails you. All the connections you have and they all fail you so that when God steps in, you will not say, it's my uncle, it's my brother, it's my brother abroad, my uncle over there. You will rather say, if not for God, 
I thought I lost all. If not for God, you will not give glory to your uncle. You will not give glory to your brother. You will rather give glory to the Almighty God. That is the point where God wants you to get to, so that no man can share His glory. We share His glory. No man will tamper with His glory. God wants to be God always. The ways of God are Somebody hearing me today. I am praying for you. What you are pursuing this year, your hand will touch it. Oh, I thought your amen will be louder than this one. I thought your amen will be louder than this one. I thought your amen will be louder than this one. Peter just said this year, what I'm believing God for, finally, Oh, you didn't say, say this year. What I'm believing God for. Finally, my hands, not even my hands, my hands will touch it. If you believe me, make a joyful noise to the Lord, Most High. something that shocked me. God said, I am so faithful. He said, ask the Israelites about my faithfulness. He said, every promises I made to them, I fail not in one. Joshua 21 verse 45. He said, ask the people of Israel, every promises I made to their father, I didn't fail one. That is exactly how the Bible put it. He said, in all promises I made to their father Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I fail not in one. Psalm 12, verse 6, the Bible says that the word of the Lord can be trusted. He said, it is like a silver that is born in finance seven times. He said, this word of God can be trusted. If God has promised you he's coming, he will come. Even though it looks late, but he will come. You just need to understand that God's time is not your time. God's way is not your way. God's time is not your time. God's way is not your way. So God can walk in any manner he wants to walk. He can change your life at any time. So whenever God remember you, is God's time. He doesn't know what you've got 20 hours three hours, four hours. 24 hours is for you. 24 hours is not for God. The Bible says he neither sleep nor slumber. So he doesn't know night. He doesn't know day. So in God there is no night. There is no day. You, because you have night, you have day. That is how you count 24 hours. So you know when seven days have gone. God doesn't know when seven days have gone. So God doesn't operate
months by calendar of man. So any time, but I keep saying, so when is God's time? God's time is simply the day God remember you. And God remember Noah. And God remember Moses. And God remember Israel. And God remember Jephthah. And God remember Joshua. And God, once God remember you, testimony will manifest. Once God remember you, nature will not stop him. Once God remember you, no power can stop God. Once God step to the earth and remember you, ha, no power can change it. He can use anything that is happening at that moment and he will turn it around to favor your family. Somebody lift up your hand and say, Oh Lord, remember me. Remember me. Say, John Matthew, say, Oh Lord, oh, Lord. Remember, me. remember me. One more time, say, Oh Lord, oh, Lord. remember me. Stretch your hand to the altar and pray and say, Lord, remember me. Just pray. Something is happening here. Something is happening here. The yoke of miscarriage. The spirit of miscarriage is losing its authority. God is healing somebody's womb right now. Somebody, God is touching that womb that doctor said have ruptured. There is a creative miracle going on right now in the realm of the spirit. There is a creative miracle going on in the realm of the spirit right now. There is a creative miracle going on. A creative miracle. A creative miracle is going on in the spirit. A creative miracle is going on in the realm of the spirit. God is touching wombs. God is touching wombs. He's ending the yoke of miscarriage. The yoke of miscarriage. The spirit of miscarriage. The spirit of miscarriage. God is ending it. God is ending it. He said that testimony you give, there is another person I am touching the womb right now. I am walking on the womb. Doctor said it has ruptured. Run to the altar and grab hold of the altar. That is instruction for you. 
the Lord will do destruction. That God told you something about that. Or you are having miscarriage. Run to the altar now. Grab hold of the altar. Grab hold of the altar. Grab hold of the altar. Run to Hold Jesus. the altar strong in your heart. Run to Hold Jesus. the altar strong in your heart. But even if the womb has rocked up, pray on the altar now. Just pray the Lord. Heal womb. Heal my ruptured womb. Heal my ruptured womb. The Lord said that testimony I give that he is doing something. Giving up on God. Tell me why you give it up on me. Tell me why you give it up on me.
Jesus taught. And Jesus taught and said, Who touched me? I want you to imagine Jairus. I want you to imagine that man that ran to meet the Savior. And the Savior was going to his house. And somebody obstructed him. How many times have you been looking for a miracle? And someone gave you some miracle and your own never come to pass. How many times have you been waiting to establish that company and then they register it only to hear that your friend own have come out and your own have not come out? How many times have four of you gone for visa and three of them visa came out and your own have not come out? And you are the one who got the connection. How many times have you written an exam with your friends? to be the best for them to hear that other people is not out for your own do you have the faith to cross the obstacle do you have faith to say even though it delay it will come to pass number two obstacle that Jairus has to face is the people's discouragement the Bible says and as Jesus finally the man have received the miracle and Jesus was moving and then they came to Jesus and Jairus and said, that your daughter is dead. The worst have just had the daughter done that. So there is no need looking after the Savior. It's done. Your baby is gone. She is dead. No more hope for you. Can you withstand people's opinion about your miracle? Can you withstand people's opinion about your testimony? And you keep saying, God, you give me a child. They say, ah, oh, you, you are wasting your time. They say, you shall listen to me. There is nothing that you have lost it, you have lost. There is no more hope for you. They, they have sat you, you are sat forever. Have you ever gotten to the church where people never give you any atom of hope? That something can change. When you are, the people you thought are going to encourage you, suddenly tell you, I wish I could encourage you. But in this situation, there is no more hope. There is no more hope. But I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. That your case looks like it is hopeless. But listen. My faith is built on darkness. On Jesus, Lord, and His righteousness. I never trust the sweetness of
I was just talking with somebody this afternoon. situation that comes your way. God never changed. So I was telling the person, I said I was in Abuja three years ago and I saw a woman that was bleeding from the door. And they did your operation but the bleeding did this stop. The places did bleeding did this stop. She lost all hope. She decided I can't continue to come to church carrying towel to church and the tower will soak with God. So she decided, no more church, no more coming to mass with God. If she's in the church, the blood bleeding, people will keep running from her, shifting from her. So she said, she's not coming again to church. But in the midst of all this, she has a grandson that is a great devotee. This is her child. Is so strong when it comes to block rosary and goes from places to places praying the rosary, believing in the power and the ability of God. And one day, the little boy came and said, Mommy, yesterday, after my rosary, I was sleeping and I saw Jesus. He came out from the altar in the church and then he touched your nose, Grandma. Jesus touched your nose, Grandma, and the bleeding stops. Junior, I've had you. And the junior said, No, grandma, you are going to church with me tonight. Tonight is the big deal. You are going to church with me tonight. And I know Jesus came out from the altar. He touched your nose. And grandma replied, Junior, for more than seven months, I don't go to church, I don't go to church again. Junior, Junior, blood is bleeding from my for you from my nose, Junior. That I don't want to be serious again. And Junior said, Mommy, if that be the case, I won't eat your food again. Junior didn't touch the breakfast. The Lord, Junior didn't touch the Lord. And Grandma began to beg, Junior, please eat your breakfast. Eat your lunch, you will see. Junior, please. I don't want you to become sick. And Junior said, On one condition, Grandma, you are following me tonight. From the altar and he touched the nose. I know he will come. He will come. And grandma said, If I tell you I will come, will you eat the food? Junior said, Now I'll finish the food. And grandma said, I will go with you. Pack the breakfast and the lunch. We bring it together and devour them. And grandma said, So you are hungry like this? And Junior replied, I'm hungry, but I know your miracle will happen tonight. And grandma was looking at the son, grandson. What, what is happening to my son? But grandma didn't know that when all hope was lost, that's for himself. Jesus knows all about
grandma said on one condition I will see whatever I want to see grandma's car grandma said I will stay at the gate with the gate man and Gino said is that where you want to say grandma he said yes so grandma we will enter stay there as grandma was staying there there is a woman near the gate now the Lord said Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be touched. 
exalted my text shall become my word will come to pass in your life. He said, I will hear it. You will hear the sound. Say, it arise. Somebody.
a conta. Even when they gave him bad news, he crossed the same obstacle. When it looked like fear, he crossed the same obstacle. He keeps following the master. He never opened his mouth and said, Master, there is no need to come again. He believed to the end. And the
where God performed miracles. This is your faith and change story. For those who believe that God is a prayer answering God, you are going to pray the second and I say, God, close your eyes and go to your father's compound. Go to wherever you came from. Where did they born you from? You will pray and say, any force from my land working against my testimony. Father, remove it now. Any power from my background, close your eyes and go to your father's compound. Go here now. Say, Lord Jesus. Every power from my father's house. As I stretch my hand to the house. Any power from my father's house. Working against my testimony. Oh Lord. Deliver me from the power. Jesus. Jesus. This is a crucial moment. This is a crucial moment. Oh. Thank you. 
you are the one that shapes this story, Lord. Once we speak with you, will it me? Once we shout out Jesus three times, you want to live on the floor, you want to stand up, I don't know how you will. But anyhow, you will say, tell you, do it, do it, until your miracle come. Keep giving, praying, and keep pushing hard. God answers prayer. I believe in the Holy Roman Church. I believe in the coming of the other saints for the blessed of sin. Restoration of the body and life of the lost. This is for the
you stand up now, mommy and daddy, you stand up. If you are living now, stand up. Stretch your hands. To him and his daughter. Close your eyes, dear Lord. If you are sitting down, stand up. Stretch your hands to me. I will preach to you about myself. I will preach to you about the Lord. Who is a family man? The Bible says that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't know what you are believing God for, but they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Stretch your hand to the altar of Jesus. Close your eyes and look at what the mountain you want God to remove. You are going to call that name Jesus. Father, I kneel before your altar and I ask as we call your name, stretch forth your hand, Lord. Let your angels move in our midst, touch wounds, touch health, touch finances, touch spiritual life, touch marital lives.
Yes. 